Welcome to Keith Vincent Carroll Studios in Patterson, New Jersey. Green Hour Media proudly presents Is This Real? Tonight, did Rasputin curse the Romanovs? And now your host, JC3. Welcome, 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 everybody, to another exciting episode of Is This Real? Is This Real? Tonight's episode, we are talking about Rasputin, as Dad said. We're talking about did if he cursed whatever the, the hell Romanovs. fam the Romanovs, like the Romanovs. Natasha Romanov. Who is who is this man? Who is this man? Well, th- <laughs> tonight's episode, guys, as we have in the booth, we have Dad say hello. Hello, everybody, and how are you? We have across from me for the first time, Mister B- the Pope himself. I'm the Pope. He's on the other side of the booth. I have Mister West next to me tonight. Konnichiwa. Wait, only one Mister West? I thought it was like Mister West, Mister West. Mister West, Mister West. Thank you. We gotta be specific. Here. In the building. Konnichiwa, bitches. He's in the building tonight with me. And tonight's episode, guys, is presented by W Energy Drinks. So, what do we have? Uh, you know, I haven't really researched this a lot. I've been editing this week. Um, so I'm relying on you, Dad, and Anthony. Mr. West has a lot up in his plate tonight uh, with, with the whole He's editing. Got production shit. He has production on his mind tonight. Fuck with me, bitches. Mr. West is product, uh, productive tonight. Fuck with me, bitches. So uh, what do we have about this Rasputin character? Who is he and why yeah, did he who curse is, people? Who is this? Is this, is this a man? Is this a man? I'm sorry, I was putting my the cans on because for some reason I want to wear them when I'm on this side of the booth. You were uh, you knocked over your is this real tumbler? I did, which you can get on our website isthisreal.org. Wow, two plugs within five minutes. We're going to hell. <laughs> shameless plug, shameless plug, shameless plug, shameless plug. So, Gregory Rasputin, the mystic from Mother Russia, um, he was a holy man, self-proclaimed holy man, and he was. Literally a nobody until he was a somebody. And he was into a lot of weird shit. And he died violently. And he had a fucking huge cock. Why, why, why? It plays into it. It um, plays into it. There's wait. a reason why that's important. Because why, why? Why? Because it was so big that his dick was stolen off his corpse. Excuse the fuck out of me? Yeah. yeah it's holding up a bridge somewhere in Manhattan. <laughs> Legend has it that after his body was exhumed before it was cremated, because he was buried after he was murdered, quote unquote, um, that they hacked it off and it went on like a tour. And like, look at it, this is the cock of Rasputin. Because he was, amongst other things, a holy man, but he was also a rapist, a pervert, and he was very, very un, un- whoa, 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 hygienic. He was a holy man that was a rapist? It, you want to know why? Because he said, no, 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 no. Well, Russian Orthodox. Damn. Russian Orthodox. But his, he thought that if you don't sin, you can't get closer to God. Because God. So let me just commit the ultimate sin. God and just, forgives. And just violate women. God forgives sinners. And if you don't sin, you can't. Uh, God forgives sinners. And if you don't sin, you can't get close enough to God. That's like the most ass backwards shit in the world. So. Yeah. It's like okay. So that's going to be my question when I get, when I ever, whenever I get to heaven, I'm going to say, hey, God. If I ever see the man, of course, uh, or woman, you know, I'm 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 all for it. Right before he says, "What the fuck are you doing here?" Uh, is Rasputin here? Because if God tells me that Rasputin is here, then we all know all this shit was not for nothing. So Gregory was born January of 1869, right? So we're talking well over 100, 150 years ago. This almost. is before this is before the Russian Revolution. Correct. correct. In fact, he befriended the last emperor. Of Last Russia. Star. Yep, the, that's means Nicholas II. And it's because of his relationship with Nicholas in a weird, weird roundabout way. It's not it, like Rasputin didn't make the Russian Empire fall, but he played a big part in why they revolted against Nicholas II. Huh. Yeah. So he's a co conspirator. N- no, no, no. So here's, here's, here's what happens, mm-hmm. right? Before Guilty or, by association. What well, kind of? I'm hearing a whirring. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. So, uh, real quick, Joe, you have something in your beard hanging down? Oh, it was just a smoothie. Gotcha. Cool. So, <laughs> 1869. Not sponsored, by the way. 1869, he's born. <laughs> it's just a smoothie. It's hey, just those, a, those energy drinks are good, man. Oh, come on. 
1869, he's born. And as a young man, he says that he has visions from God. At one point, he even, like, there was a horse that was sick, and he put his hands on the horse, and it got better. So he had... Shut up. He's not saying anything. Uh, he was a horse whisperer, apparently. So... <gasps> Shut the fuck up. I'm not saying anything. <gasps> so he... He was like a holy now, but here's what you gotta understand. This was Siberia, in eight in the eighteen late eighteen seventies, eighteen eighties, and eighteen nineties. There's no education there. It's the Russian Orthodox Church that they believed in, but people were illiterate and basically were just stupid, because they still believed in magic. They still believed in the power of like psychics. And, so and society hasn't changed in 150 years. <laughs> Not so much. But you're talking about Siberia. Can you please stop humming? Do you know how big Siberia fucking is? No. How big is it? Is it bigger than Russia? It's it's in Russia. You it's in, dick. It's in. Oh. Uh, okay, so if it, oh, let me take a guess. If it's if I could compare a state to it, would it be as big as Alaska or bigger? Bigger. About six Alaskas. Really? Siberia yeah. is as big as the is a. Oh, so it's not a state then. No, no. Siberia is bigger than the United States of America. Yeah. Wow. Cool. And you're talking. And it's like wilderness. It's like yeah. Frozen. Remember when we did? Remember we did the Yatla Pass thing? Yeah. And Tunguska. S- same thing. Yeah. Same thing. It's out there in the wilderness with select so nothing. towns here. The place where Napoleon away. went to die. That. Well, that's why you know Russia is very hard. If you want to take them over, you got to fight all that shit. Well, no, you don't really have to. There's nobody there. <laughs> it's just like the northern part of Canada. Canada, all of Canada's people are in like by Michigan. No, yeah, they're all in Toronto. Yeah, like th- that's it. <laughs> North Canada, there's nobody in North Canada. See, that's fucked up to say, but it's the truth. There's more people in Toronto than there are the rest of Canada. There's more people in Moscow. Ma- Moscow. 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 Right. There's, there's more right. people in Moscow than there are in. Fucking Siberia. Well, I don't know about that. Joe's but fresh out of the Caucasian news hour. Math gal. Math So you have. Uh, well, I said Canada, so I so got the from, accent all of a sudden. So he's from Serbia, right? So he gets married, has a couple kids. Three, only three of them survive because infant mortality rate was really fucking done back then. Yeah, kids they, got SIDS. Uh, worse than SIDS, they froze. Probably one was taken by a moose or, or a reindeer or some shit. Moose and squirrel. <laughs> You just said a moose? Probably. I, they were I, taking I, it. Don't look at, what do not look at me. I am not geographically inclined with, right, with, so, with so, what the animals dude, how of much, Siberia how are. much meese are over <laughs> there, bro? I'm pretty sure they have elk. They could. There's a lot of fucked up shit in Russia. So, he Yetis. had three kids. That's it. That survived. Fucking abominable snowman. Probably. And in 1897, he goes, you know what? Family that I have to live and provide for because I'm the ruler of the house. I'm the man. I'm going on a pilgrimage. And, and that's what he did. And this is where the mass rape comes. No, commenced. no, no. That comes a little bit later. But here's here's what happens. We have to get that in the timeline. Hold he on. He goes off and he starts walking through Siberia. And he takes a couple of years and he starts meeting people along the way. And along the way, what he did was he would go to somebody. He didn't take any like food with him and no money. He basically just went on his own. And he went to a monastery. I'm going on an adventure. Pretty much. Now there is claims that when he went to the monastery, he was actually on the he was on the lamb, like for he did something stupid back in his hometown, like he stole a horse or he stole some money or some shit. So they, either he went for a religious reason, or he claimed sanctuary until the heat died down. We're not sure. Either way, he spent a year traveling on foot, and he was always at the mercy of people. Somebody else. Yeah, like he would like he would stop and he would help somebody, and then he'd be like, "Do you have a meal? Like you know, I helped you." carry the potatoes in. Can you give me like a bowl of potato soup? I'm give hungry. me a potato. And that's what they would do. Like that's how he survived. And he would tell people stories. And he would also say that he was a mystic. And then he would read people their their fortunes or he would talk to the dead or shit like that. So he did this for a year and he became known as this wandering monk who had gained a notoriety. And then he wound up talking to, um, I'm not going to fuck her name up, but she was the granddaughter of Queen Victoria of England, who was the Tsar's, I think, niece, the Tsar of Russia. Uh-huh. What the? 
Yeah. You're looking up now? Yeah, I, uh, yes. Uh, Alexandra uh, Fed, Fedoranova. Oh, he was he was the, the consort. I'm not the, pronouncing any names in this episode <laughs> no, whatsoever. Not. So Alexand- I am not reading tonight. Alexandra was the Nicholas was Nicholas well, she was the granddaughter and she was Nicholas the second's consort. And what? She, consort was like some, a consigliere? No, it's it's like that, I got well, really you, Italian there, I'm sorry. That how would you describe like a consort? Uh, somebody who actually was just babes. I don't know. They would. Um, they're a figurehead. They they speak on behalf. They're like a, a consigliere. No. 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 no, 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 no. It'd be somebody that, like an ambassador. No wall. Somebody that you can lean on. Somebody that you can go to, and they would have the answer. Um, also, what you think you are? Maybe like. Maybe like. Uh, <laughs> I got no. I, can't. I always thought Too it was easy. like it's, she's like an ambassador. Like she's really she knows the people at the top. She goes out and she talks to you. Have more smoothie in your beard. Motherfucker. She goes out and she talks to people, <laughs> and and she develops relationships with the common folk. You know what I mean? All right. Okay. Go on. So she meets she meets Rasputin, even though she, he's already married. Yes, she doesn't fuck him, but she's okay. like, you have got to meet the czar. <laughs> the czar. And Nicholas. And his wife fall in love with Rasputin. He does not, like, he, at one point, people were writing letters to Rasputin and addressing them to um, wherever the fuck the big house is where the Tsar lived. I don't know. It's not the Kremlin. But uh, it would be like, hey. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know a lot of. The White House of Russia, wherever the Tsar lived. <laughs> The one with the goofy fucking spires. Oh, my God. They would be right to rest because they thought he lived there. Bro, if Putin... Do- <laughs> we're going to be the cause of World War Three. No, we're not. <laughs> so, in 1906, he became a faith healer for Nicholas and his wife Alexandra's only son. Wait. Are you yeah. skipping stuff? Yeah, kind of. So, Alexei was their son. Now... The way they did it, Alexei Rasputin. No, 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 not Rasputin. No, Alexei was Nicholas's son, the Tsar's son. Oh, okay. So the way they did it, it, it was it, when you died, it went to your son. He had like Nicholas and his wife had like five daughters, and one kid, one son, and like they kept fucking until they had a son. We're gonna do this. Yep. Yeah. As a matter of fact, they had another guy who was it French. Sounds like rape. <laughs> no, there was another guy who was French. And I'm going to... I don't know. It's okay. Look, you're going to take the place of me tonight. I was bullied on on YouTube for saying the word succeed. So this is what's going to happen. Is now you're going to get bullied. Probably. For fucking up these names. So he... Um, the son was a hemophiliac. But the thing is, they didn't know that then. Uh-huh. Remember. So this was like... Hemophiliac. You know, Isn't that uh, when... You, it has something to do with your blood cells, correct? Correct. You don't clot blood when you get cut. Oh, okay. So, oh, me, oh, meaning that you just um, you just keep bleeding out. Correct. Or it's, yeah, it's difficult for you to stop a cut. Got you. Stop a wound. The hemophilia. So there was one night yes, where sir. the little boy fell and got hurt, and Rasputin said, "Get the fuck out of the room. I'm gonna go in there and shut the door. It's just gonna meet me and the boy." And the night passed, and the next morning the boy was fine. And everyone was like, "He's a faith healer. He's a faith healer." Um, so it's like a miracle that he performed. What really happened? Well, re- you want to know now, or do you want me to save for later when I completely destroy Rasputin? Uh, oh, that's that's a difficult one. Save it for later. I want the the suspense. Okay. Is gonna, the suspense. Is Let me right, build him up a little. The, yeah, the, the, build him up and the, take him down. The suspense. The suspense is gonna, so, is gonna keep me like. Whoa, so he. So he. So he. So he. Bro. So he heals him. And he might not sleep tonight. <laughs> so he heals him. And now all of a sudden, the czar and his wife are all about him. Like they they. Anytime there's a major decision, they turn to Rasputin. And he's not like living. A political person. He's not a political person. He has no money. All he ha- has no power. He's just their guy. And a monk. And a monk. So he wound up being a part, r- supposedly, of a allegedly religious organization. Allegedly. Or a denomination, I guess. I don't know how to. Uh, it's called the Cliss. What is it? A fraction? Literally. The what? The Cliss. I am the click commander. No, 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 not that. Not the clits. The clits. <laughs> and here's what the clits were. They were a very extreme religious organization that they believe the only way to get closer to God is through exhaustion. 
So their parties would literally be loud dancing, at spinning around in circles till you got tired and dizzy and a lot of orgies. And supposedly they would also take play take part in cannibalism. Oh. oh like no. like they would eat pieces of each other. There's one story out there that someone like served Joseph. Li- someone like literally served a newborn on a platter. What the fuck? Fucked oh. up shit. Oh. That's the Illuminati, though. No, 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 no. It's not the Illuminati. Jesus. It's the cliff. But their big thing was, <laughs> we're going to dance around in a circle and then suck and fuck each other. Wait, they're all men? Well, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's, of course, man. Oh, okay. The Illuminati's not in but men. Well, at, at first, when, when Rasputin joined up with the cliff, it was more just, we're going to party all night and get super exhausted because in our tired state, we are closer to God. Because we are completely vulnerable. We have no defenses left. We can't fight anything that God is trying to talk to us about. When Rasputin got involved, he's like, hey, let's also suck and fuck each other, too. And that's what happened. Yo, he scared everybody. What the fuck is your problem, bro? So, hold on. We're going to take a short little break, and then we'll come back and talk about talk about more orgies. Why not? Fuck yeah. it. We will be right back, guys. Hey everybody, I'm JC3. And I'm Mr. West. And, and this, this episode, episode is brought to you by Dubby. Made by professionals in the USA, Dubby was formulated to give you focus and energy with no jitters or crash. No jitters. Their formula contains vitamins, amino acids, including the patented Neurofactor. Neurofactor. You know what Dubby doesn't give you? What is that? No calories. No calories. No sugars, no sugars, no fillers, no fillers, and no artificial flavors. When the raw ingredients arrive to their FDA registered and inspected facility that strictly adheres to GMP guidelines, they undergo a quarantine while a small sample of each ingredient is taken to test for any impurities, while also being tested to ensure that the ingredients are actually what they are supposed to be and have the proper dosage. And once the ingredients pass all the tests, then they're cleared to get mixed into the formula. So head on over to w.gg and use our offer code is this real pc for 10% off your first order. That's d u b b y.gg and use the code is this real pc for 10% off. They have great flavors such as Galaxy Grenade, Dub Sludge, Pass and Joy Tea, Monkey Madness and Dragonade. My personal favorite. Dragonade's Dragonade. right here. I got Dragonade right here. Delicious. Drink Dubby and be better. These products are not intended to diagnose, cure or prevent any disease. Hello, this is JC3 speaking. If you want to know more about Is This Real Podcast and our parent company, Green Hour Media, then visit greenhourmedia.org. You can find and follow all of our social media pages through our website. If you love our content, then you can support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel and our Patreon page. Remember, that is greenhourmedia.org. And welcome back to Rasputin and his fantastical orgy parties presented by Dubby. <laughs> no. you, you see, that's the thing. You wouldn't want an energy drink. You would not want to drink Dubby because the whole point is to get exhausted. Well, guess what? Not, we're, we're, well, y- what? Nothing. No, say it. I honestly lost my train of thought. Okay, thank you, West. So well, let's get back to it. So he was sucking and fucking a lot. And there were times where, like, it would be, like, women he just met, like, at royal parties and shit. Ten minutes later, they're in, like, a back room somewhere, and he's giving it, you know, he's giving it to them. Like, there was very little, like, personal space when it came to Rasputin. He would literally walk up to people and hold their hand and kiss them on the mouth. Like, when he first meet them. Dude, this sounds like a, this guy sounds like he was just walking syphilis. (laughs) Speaking of that, he was very unhygienic. Like, he would pick his teeth. Like, he had a very large, unkept beard. He would, like, play with his hair at the dinner table. There is one story where it's like someone asked him for a spoon, and he licked it and then handed it to them. Bro, what Like, if, he was a nasty fuck. What if he was the Yeti? Like, what if he was a fucking... Right? My God. So, he's doing all this with the Kliss, and that's, like, on the low, because you didn't want to be known as a Kliss. In Russia, then, that was I like I wouldn't want to be known as a clit either. No, Kliss, Kliss, Kliss. I don't care. That's like I was reading somewhere they said that being called a member of the Kliss party would be like in the 1950s being called a communist. Like you did not call anyone a communist in the 50s because then you were looked at as a spy. 
Well, with the Russian Orthodox religion, you didn't want to be part of anything else other than that. And if you were part of the Kliss, that was closer to heresy. But if you want to get your willy whacked, you went to the Kliss party. So that's what he did. I feel like there's so much more story behind this that we're probably not going to get to tonight. No, 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 we're getting there. So, while he was attending Cliss party, Dad, hold on. Dad, you don't look like you're having any fun. Uh, yeah, Come you on, look, bro. Look at it. We're talking about orgies, bro. You look, like You look very uncomfortable. Do you guys right see now. what this guy looks like? Yeah. You got a picture of him over there? I, uh, let me see. Okay. Hold on. This is... This is oh, hold on. Let me, let he me looks like how Marilyn Manson smells. <laughs> I mean, you, first of all, from what I'm getting, this guy actually wormed his way into the royal family. Yes. Conned the fucking shit out of him. Next thing you know, start fucking him. And he He's, I have a question. Pretty much. If you look at how terrifying he is, he mm -hmm. looks terrifying. He does, he does. He looks unkempt. Yeah, well, he was. So, uh, if he came up to you and said, pull down your pants. <laughs> He's going to get two in the head because there's no fucking way. I mean, that's, what, that's ridiculous. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> So while he's attending, You're a sick man, West. So while he's attending these orgies at night and without anyone knowing, he's praying during the day. During that he was, and he was actually good friends praying with one of the high priests of the of Is the this Orthodox how the Catholic Church. Did like, they know that he was. This guy it. was Anton Lavey. <laughs> really? We have to insert him in that episode because he's more Anton than Anton. Was. <laughs> Holy fuck! Well, this is the basis of all the Catholic priests. This the is what they study now. The prime minister. Oh. Um was like good friends with Rasputin until more people were following what Rasputin was saying than what he was saying. So then he started to be like, this guy is an asshole. You shouldn't follow him. And he became like one of Rasputin's biggest enemies. I have a question for you, Anthony. In, in all your research for this, and because um, you're getting more towards the, his, his I'm demise, building it up. right? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting there. There, I, I've, I've been watching stuff on TikTok over a little bit about Rasputin. Was there like an like uh, a, a creep, not a creep factor, but like I heard that there was like a uh, um, like he was unkillable, like he was a, uh, a, a what you call it, like a ghostly type thing, you know, like it, like to me, especially in how he's portrayed in movies, yeah, he w it looks like you know they, in the one movie I, f I forgot which one it was, Kingsman, yeah, that he just glided across the floor, yeah, you he know didn't what I mean, glide like, anywhere, like he he possessed supernatural, abilities. yeah, supernatural abilities, That's, yeah. He was he he would be someone who would be like. Is there any proof of that? No. No. Okay. Like I said, he he acted as a faith healer, first of all, or you know a what? mystic, or a fortune teller. Not for nothing, but I know he's an ugly motherfucker with that beard and everything. That looks was. like the final shot of The Shining. But to me, you know what? All these women they got beards too, so it really doesn't look oh, like. Oh my god. god! I mean, look at them all. Look, I mean, fucking sad. Say, look at this one got a mustache. Come on, that looks like fucking I will say I will say this. Back then, customs were different than they we know them today. There were, you could you could be a woman and have facial hair and you could be regarded as a beauty. Oh yeah, women didn't start shaving until like the nineteen twenties. Can you imagine the smell of that room right now? Oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, oh my seriously, God. it's like you're, you know, I can't wait to chop this episode up for TikTok. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay, Anthony, continue. So everyone, so he was catching a lot of heat. Meanwhile, you have the, the common folk of, of, of Russia who are listening to what the czar is choosing to do, like proclamations and shit, and they know that it's all being influenced by Rasputin. So now you have this... And this part of it. I mean, there's a lot of other things that went into this revolution, um, which I don't have all the information on because I didn't study that part of it. But... Revolutionists. Mm -mm. No. Different part of the world, but okay. Okay. So you have these people who are like, we're going to take <laughs> out the czar soon. Fuck this guy. And... <laughs> Hold on one second. You're dead air, dead air. I know, air, I know. So, Jesus, okay. Man. Sorry, 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 sorry. So, you have this man named Felix Yusupov. 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 He was the uh, husband of Princess Irina, who was the Tsar's niece. Yusupov, in 1914, uh, sorry, 1916, invites Rasputin to dinner. Before he gets there, he puts a, like, hors d'oeuvres out, cupcakes and shit, puts arsenic in them. Whoa. Spikes the drink with arsenic. 
Rasputin gets there. Isn't he's like, poison? yes, it's very deadly. It's very poisonous. Rasputin gets there, and he's like, hey, R- R- Razzy, you want something to eat? Hey, something Razzy. to drink? Razzy. You're Rasputin dead, eats man. the cupcakes, drinks the wine, nothing. He's like, mm, a little spicy. I like it. So Yusupov went, well, I'm supposed to kill this asshole. I'm just going to shoot him. <laughs> and that's what he does. He shoots Rasputin twice. And by this time, this is like a party. They were downstairs at like the wine cellar, and th- everyone up, everyone upstairs knew. Like everyone's like, Rasputin's coming. We're gonna fucking take him out. So he shoots him. He had a couple of his friends come over, like looking at the body, like, oh, there he is. All right, cut, throw a sheet on him. Let's go back to the party. But Yusupov didn't feel okay with that. So about an hour later, he goes back. And he unve- he's looking down at Rasputin, and he's like kicking him. He's like, mm-hmm, you dead motherfucker. And he says, all of a sudden, Rasputin's eyes flash open. And he starts yelling and screaming, and he starts chasing after Yusupov. And Yusupov runs back up the stairs. And Changing Res- his underwear, obviously. Re- Yusupov's running up the it's stairs. Didn't have underwear Rasputin back then. is following him on hands and knees and like crawl, like, a, like on all fours, running up the stairs, snarling and screaming. They shot him two more times oh, and yeah. then bound his body. Like they did with Bessie in the backyard? Pretty much. What year was this? 1916. Okay, just before that, he was stabbed, you know. Yes, he was. Okay. And he survived that stabbing. Yes, this did. motherfucker was unkillable. He was stabbed. You're going to tell me he has was. nothing. Hold on. You're going to tell me he has nothing to do as far as supernatural stuff, but they put two in the back of his head and stabbed him. He's going to have more bullet holes in him than 50 Cent. Dad, you forgot something. You what? forgot something. What? what? He was also poisoned. And he was poisoned. So, and yeah, he said, so, do, you, do you have extra rat poison for me? 19, that just wasn't spicy enough. In 1914, so two years before, yep. he was stabbed in the stomach by a woman outside of his home. With a bigger beard than his. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, he survived, and he wrote to the czar. He's like, they tried to kill me. This will happen again. Be on the lookout. So two years later, Yusupov shoots him. He wakes he tra- Well, first of all, he tries to... <laughs> So basically, he, this is what the Undertaker got before. Yeah. <laughs> he tried to poison him. Tried to poison him. Then he runs up the stairs. And he's like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Then he shoots him in front of the whole party. So, like, Yusupov and a couple of his boys take his body, wrap it up, and bring it down to a river. And I'm not going to be able to pronounce this fucking river. But um, they take him to the river. They throw his ass into the river. He's tied up. They found him frozen to the bottom of a boat. A couple days later, like two days later, and his hands are above his arms. Uh, his hands are above his head like this, making the sign of the cross. So somehow he got free of his bondage. So even after they thrown him off the fucking uh, river, into the river, he was still alive after being poisoned and shot. While suffering from hypothermia. And being, well, he died in the, in the water. And shortly after the Russian Revolution well, I would kicks off, it was the hypothermia that killed him. Well, after they announced that not Ras- the bullet holes. <laughs> after they announced that like Rasputin is finally dead, the Re- Russian Revolution kicks off. The Tsar abdicates his throne, takes his family, and they, they still love him at this point. Like every decision they've made, Rasputin has influenced them in some way, shape, or form. And then they're like, "Fuck it, let's get the hell out of here." They find. They even st- they're on the run. They stopped at Rasputin's home in Siberia, and like, oh yes, our friend lived here. Like they still idolized him. Put flowers, kind of like they what we still, do now. Yeah, they still idolized him after all this shit happened. And then they found the czar and his wife and their children, and they killed them all by like up against the wall, brrr, called the Bloody Sunday. Oh my God! Executed yeah. them all. Yeah, no, because I, I was gonna ask. Um, and uh, there is no Russian nobility left because they they were the last they were the last ones and they killed them. Well, I mean Putin's trying to bring that back, but you know, <laughs> you know old habits and whatnot. <laughs> but yeah, so the last czar was, but like everything that they did was influenced by him. And even after they their fucking reign had fallen, they were still like in love with him. They couldn't see the fact that they put their faith in somebody who shouldn't ever have been trusted in the first place. Well, so, now the Democrats of 2022 know what the hell the... T- I'm joking, guys. So that's the... I mean, I, I'm obviously skipping major plot points of his life. Well, but he was I mean, a sex fiend. He was a mystic. Obviously, you're a sex fiend if you're going to sit there and have fucking backroom orgies all day. All night. All night. 
Now, do you want me to start ripping apart Rasputin? We could do that after break. Yes, no, we have no, 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 no. After break, we, after we break. have we have a couple minutes. Do you want to start or do you want to go after break? Because we do have maybe four minutes until. Uh, yeah, I mean, unless you guys have other questions about Rasputin's life. I mean, I'm I'm just looking at some things. There was some aftermath with it, with uh, after his death. Go ahead. Um. Apparently, the body was found. Uh, and. Or, uh, in the newspaper, the Stock Exchange Gazette ran a report of Rasputin, uh, Ras- Rasputin's death after a party in one of the most aristocratic homes in the center of the city on the afternoon of December 30th. Uh, two workmen noticed blood on the railing of the Petrovsky Bridge and found a boot on the ice below, and police began to search the area. That's how they found the body. Mm-hmm. Um, they found it 200 meters downstream yeah. from the bridge. Uh, Karostikov the, C- uh, the city's senior autopsy surgeon conducted an autopsy. Uh, his report was lost, but he later stated that Rasputin's body had shown signs of severe trauma, gunshot wounds, everything you said before, and a slice wound to his left side and many other injuries, which uh, the coroner thought uh, had been sustained post-mortem. Mm-hmm. So the, obviously, if it's going to be post-mortem, that means he, he would have been... I'm guessing the slice was uh, them taking his dick. No, 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 no. That, that no, happened no. later. That happened later. I'm saying, like, <laughs> with him going downstream, this could have happened inside the river. Yes. Obviously, with all the rocks. I have, and a, I have a question. What's yeah. up? Where does the whole him cursing thing come from, then, at this point, then? Right. Well, that's, that's where I was trying to, like, kind of get to. Yeah. Because he was a mystic, and he was a holy man, and he was somebody who would be able to tell you your fortune and shit. So... If he cursed the Romanovs, who was the who was the czars? Yeah, is it so much that he cursed them? As I don't think it's so much he cursed them as like, you did me wrong, and I put a, a fucking uh, yeah. a hex and upon you. They, 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 their you. curse was they believed too much in him. Right. The true curse came from the guy who preceded R- Rasputin, which I started to say before, but I never finished it. There was a Frenchman. Frenchman. Who, who who was the same thing, a mystic that the Romanovs believed into, but they found that he was a fraud, so they kicked him out, basically. Mm-hmm. And on his way out the door, he said, I put a curse on you. Somewhere. He really said that? like so He basically said, there'll be a man... Kind of like Johnny Walker, I put a... Johnny Walker, I put a hex on you. He, basically, he said, there'll be some... I will be reborn, but as another man who will bring your downfall. Something to that effect. Oh, interesting. And then they meet up res- with Rasputin. So that's kind of more the curse... Like, he is the curse. Because yeah. eventually, you know, they uh, all died. But Rasputin... By bloody gunfire. Yeah. yeah. After this little tidbit, uh, we'll go to break. But Rasputin was buried on January 2nd uh, at a small church that uh, had the... Whatever the fuck these people are building. The funeral was attended only by nice. the imperial family and few of the their inmates. Rasputin's wife, mistress, and children were not invited, although his daughters met with the imperial family at this person's home later. Uh, the imperial family planned to build a church over his gravesite. However, his body was exhumed and burned yes. by a, detach- a detachment of soldiers shortly after the Tsar Ab- uh, abdicated the throne in ni- uh, 1917, mm-hmm. so that his grave would never would not become a rallying point for supporters of the old regime. That's right. Now, real quick, in two t- uh, as of 2004, his cock is sitting in the Museum Russian <laughs> Museum Russia. Uh, uh, sorry, the Museum of Russian a- ex- Erotica in St. Petersburg. The owner of the museum claimed he paid about eight thousand dollars for this oversized ween. And it is over 12 inches in long. Um, Holy shit! But most, it says here, most experts believe that this mystery meat is probably either a severed, severed cow's penis or possibly that of a horse's. Um, it, I oh, don't man, know. swinging low. But we're going to take a short little break. We'll be right back with more of Rasputin and his uh, horse ween. We'll be right back. I hate y'all. If you liked this video today please click the like and subscribe button and make sure to hit the notification icon to keep up with all our videos. You know, now that we're back, and now that we're talking, I'm not impressed by his dick size. I mean it was 12 inches long, 
I mean, and it's in this glass jar. Is that from, like, Tip? Hold t- on a minute. Hold on a minute. Look, I'm not going to sit here and talk dick with you, okay? Uh, uh, you know. Because you lose that argument? Because I don't want to talk. Uh, I, I Let's really... talk shop, Dad. <laughs> okay, but I'm looking Wait, at hold this on, hold on. joint Zip. right here. I'm looking at this joint and the thing, and it looks like it's maybe five and a half inches long. Okay. Five and a half inches? First of all, first of all, it's about perspective. The oh glass, my God! My stomach sticks out five and a half inches. That's it, not five and a half inches. Yeah, also, the glass, you know, kind of distorts it. It's in the formaldehyde. All right, Rebecca. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Mr. West, I'm sorry. Um, so w- one well, little tip, all of you. Hold on. There's one little tip. It. There is a theory about um, his death. There's a theory that there oh, was, I'm going to rip into that. Go ahead. There's a theory of British involvement. Uh, some writers have suggested that agents of the British Secret Intelligence uh, Service, CIS, were involved in Rasputin's assassination. According to this theory, British agents were concerned that Rasputin was urging the Tsar to make a separate peace with Germany, which will allow Germany to concentrate its military efforts on the Western Front. There are several variants of this theory, but the, they all <coughs> excuse me, generally suggest that British intelligence agents were directly involved in planning and carrying out the assassination under the command of Samuel Hoare and Oswald Rayner, who had attended Oxford University with Yusupov, or that Rayner personally shot Rasputin. However, historians do not consider that uh, this theory credible. According to Douglas Smith, there is no convincing evidence that places any British agents at the murder scene. Historian Keith Jeffrey states that if British intelligence agents had been involved, I would I would have expected to find some trace of that in the CIS archives, but no evidence exists. There you go. Well, going because back- obviously this had the, at the, the, by the time of this death, you're leading up to well, World War One. World, World War One is right. happening at this yep. point, isn't it? And, well, you got to remember Yusupov. Well, World War One ended at this point. 1919, World War One ended, didn't it? I think so. Sure. 1918. That it was like 1913. Then. Hold on, hold on. Why don't we just go to the Google this, machine? This whole thing about this guy, though. I mean, you got a page here that that that's t- telling you. Um, <clears throat> 1914 to 1918. You know the five myths about Rasputin. A lot of it's either these guys are fans of the guy or whatever, but they're saying that he didn't have mystical powers. No, no, he didn't. Um, he was a sexual deviant and a queen's lover. But the it queen's says, lover is, is 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 a maybe because she would write him letters. That sounded a little too personal for, like, the queen to be writing to just a guy. Right. So, yeah. There's, well, so there's, no, there's no evidence to suggest Rasputin was a sex-crazed maniac who had a secret affair with Russia's queen. Much like the rest of his life, his behavior in this realm had been exaggerated. And following the February Revolution of 1917, embellished by the enemies in, in attempts to propagandize his life. Why would they want to propagandize his life? Because if you make him the big Russian monster, right. then you make everybody rile up against him. And if you want, like, it's like saying, like, okay, we took out that monster. Let's make sure no other monsters like him yeah, I can see that. ever rise again. And that's where I'm going to go into now because a lot of things about Rasputin was, was, was propagandized. Like, okay, was he a mystic? No. Like, was he a mystic healer when he healed the, 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 the Tsar's son? The answer is he didn't. Aspirin was just invented a couple of years prior to, I think it was 1899, aspirin was was invented. Okay. Uh-huh. And when you give somebody aspirin, what is what is one of the properties of aspirin? It's a pain healer, right? Uh-huh. It is. But what else does it do? Um, well, it can, um, I believe it, uh, it lowers the temperature, it lowers your fever. I'm not sure about that. What does it do to your blood? It thins it. So when you're a hemophiliac and you're given aspirin, you're going to bleed more. So when Rasputin went into the room with the boy, he probably threw the fucking aspirin into the fireplace and then prayed all night. And when the kid stopped taking aspirin, he's not going to bleed out. But he doesn't fucking know that. Where are you getting this from? I mean... Well, he, 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 he healed the boy, right? So you're telling me he knew these little tricks. No, what I'm saying is... He got very lucky. Yeah, Anthony's saying by luck. He oh. went in there that, that, and said, uh, "This he, doesn't look like it's helping." And yeah, then threw it's it like, away. Yeah, he was like, "I'm going to go with God and not medicine." I guess not I mean, realizing that the medicine is the thing. Like, aspirin does work, 
but not on a hemophiliac. See, what's, what bothers me about this whole Rasputin thing is, you know, you're tell, you guys are telling me that he was a he was a, a, a sex crazed lunatic. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he looks like a lunatic. Whatever. He had his own children, obviously, because they weren't even invited to his fucking funeral. Yeah, he did. Okay, and now he, on top of that. Um, but he was a faith healer and a man of God. Yeah. So one of his daughters actually went on to be a lion tamer in a uh, circus. Thank you. You're well, welcome. that's fine. But I mean, <laughs> it just it's like the whole thing is contradicting itself. Well, I don't see any contradiction. I well, see I mean, how's a things guy, not a man to believe. Of the cloth going to be, you know, somebody that's a, a sex craze. Nitwit. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. I mean, that's you. just religion in general. No, fuck that. I mean, the, you do Catholic like Church. the Catholic Church alone, like the whole sex scandal. Oh, I mean, you I'm you've had uh, no. I'm, I'm just saying, you have forty years same, of people same, accusing priests of touching them. But it's the same. It's the same question that you're posing too. It's just like, how can a man of a cloth do the same thing? It's and don't for, And it, it's just. It's not to bash on the Catholic Church. It's just it's the same. It's a good example. Well, I mean, I guarantee it's there's a, a lot great, of it's just, religions it's just the most, that have that also. And not to mention gonna, when you have God talking to you, you can do whatever the fuck I you want. I am not going to sit here. And, is, hold on, man. I am not going to sit here and, and and say that it doesn't happen in the Catholic Church because it's been proven. It okay. happens at every church. It okay, every church, but what exactly. I'm gonna what I'm gonna say to you: watch when somebody gets accused of something. Church. Okay, I just I'm gonna th- throw this out there. Maybe you guys can now. When you hear on the news. Uh, this actor's been reported for uh, sex crimes. This guy's been feeling up women. Two women came out of the woodwork. You know, and I don't want to hear the women come back and be like, oh my God, are you? fuck you. Okay, what I'm trying to say is, all right, it doesn't seem like any of these sex crimes ever get reported about people. You know, what about the bum that's up at 7-Eleven up there that has no money? He's begging for a fucking Rasputin for a donut. Rasputin didn't have any money either. Hold on a minute. Hold yeah, on a minute. Influence. I'm not talking about Rasputin. I'm talking about the Catholic Church. I'm talking can we about, please talk about Rasputin? We can, but We're I just want to get I, I want to get this cleared out because it, it, it needs to be said. No, it doesn't. <sighs> Fine, go ahead. Whatever. Whatever. Hey, what, uh, all I'm saying is, listen. Was there a curse for Rasputin? That's Bring what I'm saying. Bring a couple lawsuits against bums, and then we'll talk. How's that? Okay, this, this is this is a tirade that we don't need to go into. All right, guys. Because it's it's not has nothing. As to do far with the as episode. being impossible to kill, that whole story can, comes from Yusupov. Yusupov was he was impossible to kill. Yusupov was fucking broke after the Russian Revolution, <laughs> so he writes his autobiography as the man who killed Rasputin. Well, he did. But did it happen the way he said it happened? Or did he literally just shoot Rasputin in the head and called it... it, I have a question. Does the people behind him back him up? Well, the only people who are behind him are the people who uh, sold the story. And and the people who... What about the other people at the party? I don't know that. I don't know about that. What I'm saying is, though, you have this book that went out about how he's the man who killed the demon from Russia. People ate that shit up and that's what became the truth when the legend becomes popular you print the legend and that becomes the truth that's what happens it's exactly what happens uh like like the story of paul revere and shit like that it's like it became bigger than it actually is you don't talk shit about paul revere that man's an american hero all i'm saying is it becomes this huge story and we stop ignoring some of the facts because the story is much more interesting. What happened is, with with, with Rasputin, there was no water found in his lungs during the autopsy. If he was alive under the water, he would have been trying to breathe. Water would have been found in his lungs. There was none. He had the two gunshots. One One bullet was lodged in his spine, the other one was lodged in his gut. But a third gunshot was in his fucking head. Yeah, there was a gunshot in his forehead. So I don't want to hear anybody who turned around and was like, well, we poisoned him and he didn't die, so I shot him and he didn't die, so we drowned him. No, you didn't. You shot him in the fucking head and then you threw him in a river. And as far as the poison's concerned, he knew that he was going to be assassinated. Because, well, at least he prepared for it. And, and now, I don't think in the autopsy that they didn't find any poison. In there it. was no poison yeah. in his autopsy. But besides that, he might have been microdosing some some cyanide to build up a resistance, but the body doesn't process that shit. There is another thing that if he didn't if he didn't have um, acid in his stomach, like if he just got done throwing up, and then you ingest poison, the poison doesn't digest into your system as fast, so you don't die as fast. So if he was suffering, there's a there's a um, sick. Hurts. 
there is a sickness where you don't have as much stomach acid as normal people. I forget what it's called. Oh, yeah. Probably. If he suffered from that... Isn't it amazing that we have an acid in us that, like... Eats everything? Eats everything. Yeah. If he was suffering from that, Isn't then that's why... Amazing? That's why he didn't die from it the poisoning. Is. If he was microdosing, he didn't die from the poisoning. Either way, the fucking gunshot wound in the middle of his forehead is pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, that, that would that would take out a lot of people. So, yes, he was somebody who was... Not 50 Cent, but he didn't take the gunshot to the head, though. He just took it to the face, like Jenna Jameson. Oh, my God. My point is, he was somebody who had influence, who was in the Tsar's ear, who allegedly had a had lots and lots of sex and was pretty disgusting very unhygienic and when it was time to clean house I know he had siblings the Russian people cleaned fucking house by starting with Rasputin look I it don't matter what you look like sex is gonna happen if you especially that time sex is sex but as far as let's let's, let's get not, in the, not under freaking an orthodox cur- uh, church, they looked at that shit as like holy. Right, uh, but when you have God speaking sex. to you, you can do whatever the fuck you God want. God said, "Put it in a bud." Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna uh, okay. So, as far as the curse part, which we really didn't talk about, what happened to the family after that? Because there really didn't happen besides. You know, there's not much to talk about. They got they got massacred. Yeah, they got massacred before believing in this man and yeah, I don't think his, it, I don't think, I, I don't think it's just a curse. They were just stupid. I know. I just I don't think that if even you could have Rasputin and a ton of them, it doesn't matter because that family was going to be wiped out anyway. Because the Russian people were tired of the bullshit and they they revolted and now it's the way it happened. So uh, they want to make blame it on Rasputin, you know, and that he cursed him or anything. But I, I don't believe that for a minute. I believe that he was just some nitwit that got involved with these people. And they threw all the blame on him trying to save their own ass. And when that didn't work, the people were going, you know what, fuck you. Kill, kill a few more of them. We're taking you the fuck out. And that's exactly what happened. So, so no so curse. communists took over. No curse. If you're asking me if there's a curse, I, I just think it's a, the natural progression of the Russian people. And they tried to blame everything on this Rasputin guy. And then cut his dick off and put it in a museum for everybody to see and they're making money on it. So no curse. I don't believe it's a curse. Okay. Though. I ask Anthony? Uh, no, I don't think it necessarily was a curse in the sense of like a voodoo hex was put on anybody. Like I said, it's more of it's more of along the lines of they they backed the wrong horse. He was the curse. He was the thing that 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 brought their downfall. Or he was the he was the easiest scapegoat in the history of man. Oh, probably. I mean, he was easier than fucking than uh, than the Lee Harvey Oswald for Christ's sakes. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, West. Uh, no, negative. No, negative. No, no curse. No, no curse. Negative. Gotcha. I don't believe it was a curse either. I, I, I don't. Again, I think that this family, the Romanovs, were just sitting there like, okay, like we're gonna believe in this guy, and then um, you know everything he does because he quote unquote saved our kid, and then you know th- that's really it. There was no curse put on them. they they died because of a revolution, as many kings and queens and czars have over the centuries of uh, you know, people revolution happens, the top person has to go, I mean, the fucking French cut their king and put it in a freaking basket you know what I mean? Oh yeah like, that shit happens so, no, I don't think it's a curse hey, hey, it's the only thing that's fair about life, human cruelty, everybody got theirs, yep, and everyone's gonna die holy shit, what dad? No, no, I'll tell you off here. All right. Uh, so, as far as next week's episode, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are talking about the curse of Dudley Town. I don't know what the hell that is. We'll figure it out next week. We'll figure out. Aunt, you okay over there? Tune back contact. in. Oh, his contact came out. Well, uh, as far as this is the end of the episode, guys, remember to um, go to our website, greenarmedia.org. Follow our TikTok page, Is This Real PC. Follow our Instagram page, Is This Real PC. Um, just one thing. I know this is going to air a couple weeks, couple February weeks. 5th. Okay. I uh, just want to say uh, I want to shout out to the 10 people that were killed and slaughtered in California today by a mass crazed gunman yet again. So, you know what? Uh, yes, yes. Hold on to your people, people, because you never know. Yes. So, uh, 
Please, uh, you know, visit our website, greenarmedia.org. As I said, follow our TikTok page, Instagram page, Facebook page, all the pages. And, um, <coughs> you know, go to w.gg and uh, put in the code for your first W product. W is delicious, guys. And don't forget the music either. Oh, yeah, and we have a music show uh, on Spotify. W-G-A-M. W-G-A-M Green Arrow Radio. Please go visit... All of it's going to be on our website. Subscribe to the Patreon. Yes, subscribe to our Patreon page also. Again, it is a dollar to sign up, and you get Is This Real True Crime every week. New episodes go up every week. and um, No commercials. No commercials for it at all. You don't have to hear any of the Debbie products and stuff like that. Um, at the same time, there is a $5 option where you get more, uh, like you get the Is This Real After Hours stuff up there too. As far as the Is This Real After Hours, we sit there and go on TikTok after every episode of Is This Real, and we talk to you guys. We talk to the people. It is a live Q&A. 99% of the time, it goes off the rails within the first 10 seconds. It's true. There is so much. Like, last week, we t- last week, what did we talk about? Pancakes or? No, no. We talked about if it's a taco or not. If it's a ravioli. Ravioli. That's, that's the big subject of most of these lives. But uh, yeah, so but if you sign up for that five dollar page, you get the Is This Real True Crime, you get the uh, after shows, you get all the behind the scenes stuff, you get a personal message from each one of us, and you get a mug with any one of our designs on it for free, just for five dollars to sign up. Go to Is This Real uh, TikTok page, you'll see the link in the bio. But or the ten dollar go- option, I'll come over and tickle you. There is no ten dollar option. Oh. And or just go to the greenhourmedia.org page, and the Patreon link is in the uh, the top part of the page. I don't know what the, hell, the header, but uh, thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, everybody, say good night. Good night, everybody. Adios, motherfuckers. Peace. Peace. And we will catch you guys next week for the curse of Dudley Town. Good night, guys. Konnichiwa, bitches. It's Ryu West speaking. If you want to find out more about the Is This Real podcast, follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash isthisrealpc or on Twitter at isthisrealpc or on Instagram at isthisrealpodcast, all one word. 